Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's Spider HD, the calibration suit for still and video color management. I'm Boris Bergman from Data Color, and I'd like to welcome you to this webinar. You see, I'm located in Europe, and therefore I would like to say hello, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're located. The room is quite crowded, and I would like to give you a short overview about the upcoming next uh, about 60 minutes. We will start uh, with this uh, presentation now about the Spider HD, um, the latest product from DataCal. And um, after this presentation, I will take you with me into a chat where you have the possibility to enter all the questions you have. And my colleagues and I, my colleagues from our Asian uh, office, will answer all of your questions as best as we can. We also have uh, uh, one of you to be a lucky guy tonight. We have uh, one of you to be win a Spider HD bundle. And um, my colleagues will inform you by email and with the follow-up mail, everybody will know who has won this uh, Spider HD tonight. Okay, so let's start right away and have a closer look about the Spider HD. And we say it's the first overall color management solution for photography. Products um, you might have seen in a similar configuration before. But we also say for video, so it's for TV and your camera. So that means all of you are uh, even if you're a photographer or you're a videographer, and all within between, um, you have an advantage of the spider HD here. So one of my colleagues has unmuted his microphone, so I will mute him from here. Uh, okay, one second to make sure. Oh, there, and here. Okay, good. Let's have a closer look for the package. You see it's a bundle and what we say, uh, what are the components and what is inside the box here. And first we have the Spider 4 Elite HD sensor. And uh, we have on top the Spider Web, which allow you to attach the Spider 4 Elite HD sensor even to screens up to 70 inch. And uh, we have, uh, the spider cube uh, in the box and it's also important we have the spider checker inside. These are the um, parts you will find in the box plus the software and everything else and let's have a closer look to see how to work with these and what they are good for in photography and also on video, so for the stills and as well as the uh, videos. So therefore, I have one question which I would like to ask you and would like to have a feedback. The question is, um, how do you shoot your stills and your videos? And please, uh, yeah, as you can see from the icon, you can, of course, uh, select more than one. That means uh, if you uh, shoot always in RAW, no problem. And if you also shoot video, please do so. Please select all of them. And it's also interesting for me to see if you already use a gray card, you see. So and what I will do, I will, as soon as uh, the majority of you has voted, I will share these results and you will see also to get an idea um, how the attendees in this webinar um, are focused on. So that's what we have. Okay, great. Thank you for the voting here. So what I will do now, I will share the results with you. Um, there are only 4% of you who say, I don't uh, shoot in RAW at all. Okay, um, we have 25% uh, saying sometimes they shoot their stills in RAW. So, and the majority of 73% says, okay, I will do shoot my stills always in RAW. 
about 40% of you, 39 to be precise, say also shoot video, and 30% of you use a great card. So that's great. And uh, so we have um, some possibilities to, to upgrade your knowledge, to um, make your understanding what are the benefits of um, all the equipment we have in here tonight. Okay, so let's start. And uh, let's uh, start with an, a general approach. And therefore, I have created a little sample. And this is a sample on uh, photography, but you can just transfer it to videography as well. So, image editing without color management without, for example, a calibrated monitor. That's the sample what is I would like to show you now. Um, what's, what can be the disadvantage if the components in the workflow are not calibrated? Think about this. We will take the image, take your uh, photo, and you can see at the um, display of your camera, Okay, it's a black and white. I have used this as an example here because it makes it uh, easier to understand. So if you look your image um, and you watch your image at the display of the camera, it looks okay. Maybe have you used a great card or not, don't care about at the moment because we say at this sample it's on the monitor which is not calibrated. So what you do, you save the images to the hard disk, and you can see here that's a hard disk and showing the image, and still the image is okay. Of course, there is a little difference between the display of the camera and the hard disk, which is illuminated here by these images, as you can see, but that's okay. Displays of the camera can't be calibrated. So nobody would complain about it. But now you will open this on your computer. And we assume maybe you have a new monitor, so the monitor is not calibrated. And if I open this and my monitor is not calibrated, for example, my monitor, just an example, shows a little bit too much green, so it has a green tint here. So I can see, okay, that's not a black and white anymore, that's something uh, greenish here. Okay, so that's the first time I see my image. So what I will do, I will correct this. So what I will do, I have to make sure it's a black and white again. So I look in the circle of colors and the um, uh, color which is uh, on the opposite side of the circle of colors is magenta. So I will add some magenta here. And if I do this, uh, we will have a result like this. Um, and the image looks good now on the screen again. But keep in mind, the image on the hard disk was a neutral one. And so due to the reason I added some magenta here, I have now a file which I save on the hard disk which has a magenta tint. And if I print this file, of course, the printout will be magenta, more or less. And you can see there's even a shift in there because I say I have no color management uh, during the entire workflow. But the problem was the monitor here. So also the problem that the printer is not calibrated. But this is a, a minor issue because that's the last step in the workflow. Okay, great. That's an easy um, uh, explanation, what can be happen if the components in the workflow are not color managed? You judge them, you judge the corrections uh, based on incorrect information. And color managed uh, color manage, uh, equipment will allow you to judge in the correct way and that's what we want to do. Okay, so we need some calibrated uh, equipment here. So that's what we have in here with the Spider um, HD. And the Spider HD um, with all its components, uh, we will have a closer look. Um, you remember we said 
about 70%. So the majority says we always shoot in RAW, but only 30% of you use a gray card. We have, uh, it was something about in the middle of 20% saying, I sometimes shoot in RAW. So the gray card is important here, and we don't use the gray card. We use the spider cube with its advantages. And that's uh, to have a short look because I will focus on um, the Spider HD software and not about those components you might have seen in a different webinar because the Spider Cube, the Spider Checker are products which have been on the market uh, for more than a year at Data Color. So when you shoot your RAW, images, uh, you got the full flexibility on exposure, on color temperature, on the blacks. A lot of people say, okay, I don't do a white balance because I have with the raw files, I have the full flexibility. Yes, you have. The flexibility you have uh, is also a disadvantage, you see, um, in two points. The flexibility gives you, okay, you can correct without having any issues, without having any loss in quality, but you have to correct on the other hand. That means you have to do some work, you have to spend some time, and the question is here, you don't have a reference. So that's what we have in here. So the question could be on this image. Um, you see, this image has been taken in our European office, and on the left, there was a, a large window. On the right, which you can see very easy, there was uh, just a, a, a lamp, and you can see that was indoor. So we have a mixed light com uh, situation here. And the question is now, if you do the raw conversion, is this the right one? Is this the right one? Or was this the right color settings you have seen? To be honest, as I have done this shoot here, I do not know. I have seen the situation. I have been in that office before, um, but I don't know what about the light situation. And even if you have it in your mind, it's really hard to remember. And you want to adjust it, so that's what you have to do. And you don't want to spend more time than necessary, of course. So what we'll do, I will take the spider cube, and the spider cube comes here, uh, not like an ordinary gray card. It is due to the cubic design. Um, it has the gray um, elements here, the 18% gray patches. It has a white, it has a black, it has a chromic uh, uh, cube on top, so chrome ball, and it has a black trap at the bottom. And this gave me first uh, the reference for the white balance. And due to the reason it's a cube, we have in this situation, remember it's a mixed light situation, um, we have the windows on the left, and we have the artificial light, so an ordinary bulb light uh, on the right. And you see the left side is the brighter one, so that means the window light was the major light in this scene. So that's why I pick and I do the white balance on this side. This has been the reflection of the bulb light, and it is not as uh, bright as the window light over here, so that's a good way to find out what is the leading light in here. That's what one thing what we can do with the spider cube. The next is we have all information now to adjust the contrast range. That means we can say, okay, at the black trap there is only underexposed, uh, so if you have the clipping for the shadows, this has to be indicated in here. And at the chrome ball on top, you will always have a highlight reflection. So that means we have the possibility to set the clippings for the highlights, and it will be indicated. That means it's easy to do with the white balance here, then the exposure to make sure the white areas are correct, and with the blacks to make sure the black trap and the black area, which is a normal black, can be differentiated. 
Okay, so that's how we do it. Very easy. And um, uh, we have been talking in several webinars and that about this, and we will do this also in the future. Second, uh, the spider checker. But allow me one last information to all of you who shoot in RAW and to all of you, especially those who also take videos. If you take the videos, you don't shoot in RAW. The video will be taken in a compressed mode. So um, it's a little bit like JPEG, you see. So you don't have the reserves as you have, as you know them from the raw files. That's uh, something you have to keep in mind. I will come later back on this again. So, um, talking about the spider checker. And we do again very shortly, very briefly here, because you may have also seen uh, a webinar about the spider checker. But I will give you some useful information about the spider checker. What you can do with the spider checker, there are a few things. One is you need a balance for the white balance. Uh, and a reference for the byte balance, as we have seen with the spider cube. And now we also need a, uh, a reference for the color balance. And if you think about uh, a situation like you, you may have on holiday, if you're on holiday and you have your uh, SLR equipment and carry around, do some nature shootings and so on, great. But in the evening when you go out uh, for a dinner, um, very often you don't want to take uh, the huge and heavy SLR camera with you and you have just a system camera that also is able to shoot and roll. And if you remember the good old times where we have the analog films, um, you have seen, okay, this was a film from uh, Fuji, this was a film from Aqua, this was a film from Kodak and so on. Of course, there was the chemistry and the paper who had also an impact. But from the colors, you could see, okay, this is more a Valvia, this is more whatever, um, uh, an ectochrome or whatever. And uh, the same situation now, today, you see, different cameras will produce a different color setting, a different uh, color characteristic, you could say. And what we have done in here, we have just increased the um, saturation a little bit because if you have a look in here, we, you will see there are NEF files, so from the Nikon camera, and there are CR2s from an Canon, uh, Canon RAW files, and the Canon, they look a little bit colder, but Nikons are always a little bit warmer. But even if you have two different Nikon, two different Canons, you will see the difference. And uh, if you're on a holiday, you have these two cameras. If you're, for example, do wedding photography, um, either you come for security reasons and have your two cameras just in case one is broken, um, or you do uh, take the images in a team. And uh, people in the team used to very often used to have different cameras. So at the end which is not a problem here, but in the end, if you do a, uh, a book for the of photography here, so a photo book, if you do this, and if you present this to the bride and the groom, think about having a wedding dress in different colors in, in a photo book. I don't think you will have um, a happy bride in here because she wants to be the one, she's, the, she has the, the bride's dress and that has to be identical on all images. So what we have to do, we have to balance this. And therefore, like a shoot with the gray card or as what I would recommend, a shoot with the spider cube, what I do, I attach the spider cube on top of the spider checker, it's possible, and then I do a shoot with both and so I have my reference for the colors and if I apply this reference, so I have two settings, it looks like, okay, these images have the same color characteristics. And for those people who shoot products, uh, stills, whatever, the product colors are correct now. And 
again, for those who go to the film area, you see, think about uh, the adjustment between DSLRs, maybe also a GoPro. Of course, a GoPro do not shoot in RAW, but if you do light balance, then you have a good uh, film there. And then you can do afterwards use the spider checker to adjust the colors among the different devices. Think about a Canon EOS C300 or whatever you use for taking your films. So that's good to know because the spider checker works with Adobe Photoshop RAW, that means Adobe Camera RAW, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom, focused from Hasselblad, that's on the still. But if you use, for example, DaVinci Resolve 11, uh, which is the newest product here from Blackmagic Design on films, you can also use the spider checker in there to adjust your colors to make sure all your clips, all your uh, um, sequences in the film are identical. You just uh, uh, take it, uh, take one shot, it could be a still, it could be just uh, that somebody holds it uh, into the camera and you have the recording, no problem, you can just um, work with it inside DaVinci Resolve 11. Okay, good. We have, that is important to know, we have a little so-called fade checker. That's uh, an area here. So we have a, uh, an, the possibility to make sure that you can control that the color patches are accurate because, you see, colors will fade over the years. And um, therefore, we have created um, color um, charts to be replaced if necessary, and to have an indicator, we have this fade checker here, we have a second one which is underneath here in this area, and you can compare them, one is covered, the other one is open, and if this starts to fade, and to give you an idea when this will start to fade, we have done a lot of tests, and uh, it will stay for years, you see, only please do not place it in the sun and leave it there for, let's say, a few months. Uh, nobody would do this because then, of course, it will stay, it will fade. So use it and afterwards, like a book, just close it and it's covered and you will be happy with it for years, no problem. We have also an extra reference for the skin tones here. So that's also very helpful because we have a special setting that allows you to say, okay, you want to do um, a, a special setting for screen tones. That means um, the orange and red tones will be reduced in the saturation a tiny little bit to avoid the reddish uh, skin, what you can see on a lot of uh, images um, if you have a look around. Okay, and to the reason we can replace the cards, it's durable, it's ecological, I have talked about, and if you turn it around, and now we come to those who take um, films, who take videos, we have the grey card, inter, uh, just turn the, around the, uh, the cards, just open it, turn around the card, that's very easy to do, and you have everything you, you need for uh, the camera internal white balance. The reason why I remember, I'd like to remember to use it here, as I mentioned before, if you do films, on a film you always have the problem, um, at the moment you have compressed information. That means um, it's not like a RAW, it's, it's uh, you see, it's more like a JPEG. So you don't have the reserve on a RAW where you take images in uh, 10, 12 bit color depth. On a film, on a video, you don't have these reserve. So that means you have to make sure that the films do look accurate. And uh, because you don't have that much reserve to do the editing before you get unwanted results like bending or something like this. Okay, great.
great. So, question is how to do it, how to use it. You take a picture uh, of the spider checker in optimal light conditions and you just crop it and um, you will have the correction done automatically in the end by the spot checker software that gives you um, a preset. This preset is based on HSL channels and uh, so you can apply it very easily. Okay, here you can see. So the plugin does all the work if, if you work from Lightroom. Also, the plugin does all the work inside the um, um, inside the DaVinci Resolve. So that's also it's easy to handle at the end. Okay, that's about the Spider Checker. Let's go for the next step, and therefore I would like to know from you who is already calibrating his monitor and what equipment do you use when you calibrate the monitor? Okay, I can see the results could come in. Thank you for voting. And uh, just give you a feedback in advance. We have um, quite a lot of you, of the attendees here, who do not calibrate their computer monitor at all. So what I will do, I will close this question and show you the results. So we have um, the majority of you, 38% using a Spider 4, 32 a Spider 3 or older. Think about uh, the functionalities of the Spider 4. Um, there is a lot of improvement. We have 14% using a different brand, but the 17% think about purchasing um, equipment for the calibration because it's worth to have. Otherwise, you are doing image um, editing controls and colors where you don't know, you don't have any reference. So it's, um, yeah, it's something that doesn't work at the end. So, why is um, calibrating of the monitor that important? Um, to be honest, we have different monitor technologies, different backlight technologies. And uh, you see, that's something really important. And if you think about uh, different technologies, think about different light technologies. Think about having a, an ordinary bulb light in the room and replacing with an energy saving light or with an LED. Think about driving a car and driving a car first time with xenon light and you will see the color source has an impact how you receive, how you recept the colors, how you judge the colors, you see. And due to the reason we have different type of monitors, we have also different type of monitors in the way of some are able to cover sRGB and a lot of others um, maybe can cover Adobe RGB or a certain percentage of Adobe RGB. So they call wide gamut displays. Yes, of course, we still have some CRTs. We have LCDs, we have um, tablets, we have laptops, des uh, desktop, monitors, they all have a different um, gamut to reproduce colors, so they all look a little bit different. And these have to be calibrated, and you can do this. And, uh, and even if you have one on the same monitor, the monitor will, um, there's an aging process, you see. Um, the luminance will drop the older the monitor gets. And even if you say, I have an LED where the, the luminance does not drop that much compared to the good old CCFL technology, uh, you have inside RGB filters because today most of them are the new monitors which have LED backlights. They have white LED, so to create red, green, and blue, they have red, green, and blue filters on, uh, in front of each pixel, and um, these uh, will also fade. Okay, so that's also the reason why um, you have to recalibrate after a certain time. Okay, 
So, let's start for the main point in here. And uh, the Spider 4 Elite HD, the software will cover, cover the computer ca display calibration and the TV and video reference display calibration. Both are interesting to see, and I'd like to have a closer look here. So, when you start the application, you will just have to decide, okay, I do want to calibrate a laptop, a computer desktop, or a front projector. So, something, a device, an output device that is connected to a computer. Okay. Or the alternative, you have a Blu-ray, a TV, a DVD player with a TV, and the source comes from uh, yeah, a receiver or a DVD or Blu-ray. It does not come from a computer. So if so, uh, the second method is the way to choose. But we will have a closer look later on. Okay, good. And um, so next question is what to do. We decided to go for the computer monitor. So and I'd like to go through this process with you to. Um, help you to see that it is quite easy to do. So what we do, you have to wait uh, for warm-up because uh, during the warm-up, uh, let's say half an hour, um, the colors will change, they will shift on screen and that wouldn't help. Make sure you have light conditions um, where no direct light is falling onto your display screen. Be aware of the controls of your monitor. Also, again, this is not really complicated, but it is uh, important to know, you see, where to access. And plug in the spider. So that's it. Decide what type of monitor. And then you can, and if you have different monitors here, you can select the different monitors which are attached to your computer. Select what uh, controls you have. Could be a Kelvin preset, so uh, you can select temperatures. S on some screens are RGB sliders. In the past, it was useful to have on LCDs. Nowadays, um, they are not that important anymore because LCDs, in general, are much better by default here. Good, and then you go for the calibration. So please select full color. Go for, if you're on a, a photographer, you say the gamma would be 2.2. That's the recommendation for photography. Uh, the white point will be 6500K for Kelvin. Um, that's uh, the white point of sRGB and Adobe RGB. And the brightness would be um, 12, uh, 120 candle per square meter. So also due to the reason the computer, uh, the software already know uh, on this screen was a normal gamma screen that covers sRGB more or less, and it comes with a white LED backlight. So you will see the information here. Let's have a look. Um, we go to the advanced settings here. Due to the reason we say. Okay, let's have a closer look to those who go for the video to editing. And uh, there you have also the possibility to select presets which are NTSC, PAL, SECAM, or which is uh, for the DVD, that's the ITU REC 709. It is very close to sRGB, but it's not 100% identical, you see. So on the Spider 4 Elite HD and on the Spider 4 Elite as well, you have this video standard also to use as a calibration target. And therefore you can see we have now the possibility to see it on how to work on both areas, on photography and on videography. But if you're on, um, if you do video editing, watch out for the software. You know, um, a lot of people use, for example, Adobe Premiere Pro. 
Adobe Premiere Pro has but one di large disadvantage, you see. It is not color managed. That means, not like in Photoshop, where you can select, okay, this is my color space for the, for the files. This is my color space for the images. Um, on Adobe Premiere Pro, you can't do this. Adobe Premiere Pro is not color managed. Color managed applications for video, DaVinci, Adobe, uh, sorry, DaVinci Resolve 11, for example. And um, if you're on the Adobe suite, um, please use the After Effects because on the After Effects you can say, okay, this is my color space of this video clip, and this is the color space of a different video clip, and then you can match it. Unfortunately, on Premiere Pro you can't. Sorry but that's real life. Okay, let's continue. And uh, so you can see, you can select the IT, um, ITU REC 709, and it comes also with a gamma, but not 2.2, it's 2.22. You see, also the brightness says native, which means um, you will set the monitor to a certain brightness level, and that's it, you see. Also the white point, it is, Similar, but not identical to sRGB, but it's very similar. Okay, good. Good. And for those who go to the expert uh, console here, you can create your own setting and save it as your own target, which you can see in here. So that means you have the entire access to create your own settings. This is um, uh, for all of you who have already some experience and may have some um, uh, settings from different programs and want to make sure the monitors show the colors in the right way. And especially for those who switch from still to video and back and uh, to integrate stills in the video, this is important to know here. Okay, if you want, please have a look at our website. There's a so-called Spider ebook that gives you uh, some background knowledge on color management here. Okay, and when you do the calibration at the end, you can compare your profile versus sRGB versus Adobe RGB. So that's how you do the monitor calibration. So you can see that's quite an easy way. What I have just skipped here to be honest, um, you will see uh, samples and the information, okay, I touched the spider here on the monitor, but I assume as we have um, a very good assistant in the software that's easy to handle so you don't have to worry about. Good. So, if you want, in addition, you can analyze your monitor, and therefore, we have the advanced analysis function in here. And this means also, you can say, okay, what is the gamut of my monitor? And you will see it in the graphic uh, um, reproduction here. And what is also, what about the color accuracy? And the screen uniformity. The screen uniformity, from my point of view, is very important and if you look at a review of monitors you will find very often okay a graphic showing the screen uniformity regarding brightness and regarding color because every screen is individual here apart from those who are let's say the high-end ISOs that start at let's say 2000 US dollars um, <coughs> these uh, they are quite very uniform but you have to spend a lot of money on those. And therefore, it's good that you know about your own screen here. Okay, that's what is important here, and that's the reason why I show this function and mention this function in here. So, let's have a little round out on the computer display calibration and uh, select your reference depending if you are working off, for example, uh, to create your DVDs or to create uh, your stills. Please select the right target. Um, check for uh, the entire workflow. If you work for a photographer, if you, as a photographer, you might have a different target if you compare it. You would work, for example, a printing house. So it has to be, the workflow has to be stable all over the same settings all over, that's important.
and then you will do the calibrations and the calibration the sensor will measure the differences between what it should be and what it is and by this it will calculate the correction curve and creates an ICC profile and this will be um, automatically activated on your computer so you don't have to do you only have to select the correct reference but there are some additional uh, things to maybe know about you see one thing is I just said what I, you create an ICC profile what for the hack is an ICC profile an ICC profile ICC stands for International Color Consortium and uh, today you can say all companies who are related in any way to color are member of the ICC profile IC, ICC the IC, the International Color Consortium um, defined how the different devices are able to communicate with each other that means um, the ICC profile uh, got the entire information it's a data set and it describes the color space and the behavior of a device so it corrects the white point it is responsible for the linearization uh, on the monitor for the primary colors for the RGB colors it is important if you work with an uh, um, an ICC profile from a printer paper combination you will need it for the soft proof functionality in Photoshop for example and it is used on displays printers there are scanners cameras and so on all work with ICC profiles here okay due to the reason the ICC profile has got two parts one component that is used by the operating system and the image editing software and that's the important point you see Photoshop Lightroom are able to use this component DaVinci Resolve, Adobe After Effects are able to use it. Um, if you think about browsers, um, Chrome, um, Safari, Firefox are able to use it. Uh, the Internet Explorer, the newest generation can use part of it, not the entire in the um, not in the correct way, 100%. There are still some things are missing in here all the versions they couldn't use color management and ICC profiles at all the Windows desktop does not use the ICC profiles Microsoft Office does not use the ICC profiles and much much more are not color managed and cannot do this and you remember Adobe Premiere Pro also is not color management so will not use the ICC profile so don't expect that the colors will be reproduced correctly on those applications because these applications are not compatible with the ICC standard I'm sorry the second part uh, are the correction curve these will be uploaded to the lookup table of the graphics card so what is important for you to know you don't have to do any changes in your uh, imaging software you don't have to uh, set a profile there just leave it as it is the ICC profile of your monitor will be used automatically so very easy okay that means um, how to use such a monitor profile Let, please allow me to give you one um, easy explanation here you do your shoot in sRGB or Dolby RGB that means if you shoot in RAW you do the RAW conversion at a certain point and at that point you will decide okay if I go on Adobe RGB or if I go on sRGB here so then you come on your computer and on your computer you will use your image editing software that will take the image and it stays in sRGB please do not just uh, switch from one to another um, because it's like uh, doing a translation you see and if you translate uh, one way and then the other way back it's like having uh, a human translator but not one of them you have two of them let's say one uh, or three of them let's say you have a text you translate this to English 
uh, as the text was in the original was French. Uh, somebody will translate the English one to the Russian one, and uh, um, a third guy will translate from the Russian to uh, back to French. Uh, the content will be identical, the words will be not. And that's the problem here. And so please do not switch. Stay with the profile for the entire workflow. Now is the question, where's the, the monitor profile? That's very easy. The monitor profile will be automatically calculated on top, but just to give you the impression on your screen. So it will be never ever applied to the file itself. So the image will be always sRGB or Adobe RGB or whatever color space you have selected, like uh, Pro Photo or whatever. You see, the monitor will be used only on my computer, and if I give it to somebody else, somebody of my colleagues, um, on his computer, his monitor profile will be used. And if I uh, use it, use this image for the internet, then I would say, okay, I will create a version to be an sRGB if my file, if my image was in Adobe RGB. That's the only step where you're allowed to switch the profile here. And if you do print, let the printer driver do its work and uh, use the color management settings. And you will be asked, some in some configuration, you will be asked, do you sending sRGB or you're sending Adobe RGB data because uh, for example, some printer drivers, they do need this information to handle the colors in the right way to convert into the ink colors, like CMYK. Okay, good. Okay, great. So, some additional hints if you do image editing work. Please start in your room, use indirect lightning. Um, it would be great if you have a stabilized ambient light situation. That means uh, not a change in situation regarding the color temperature, regarding the luminance. That would be the ideal situation. If you have a changing situation, make it as stable as possible. As I remember here, warm up the monitor at least 30 minutes and recalibrate your monitor every, three, every two weeks. Um, if you're a little bit lazy like I am, recalib I do recalibration at least once a month. But if I have an important job to do, what I do just before I start the job, I do the calibration, even if I have calibrated last week. And what is important, avoid colorful uh, workspaces. That means um, on your table, if there's uh, uh, something in red, or if you wear a red T-shirt, do not do this. A lot of people think, okay, he's talking rubbish, but please allow me to give you a sample to show you how easy it is to manipulate your eyes. You can see this image here in the middle, there's a black dot. Please focus with your eyes the black dot. And um, you see what I have done, I have inverted the colors of this image. You please keep your eyes on your black dot. Unfortunately, I have to talk a few seconds here that your eyes get used to this black dot. And you can see uh, there's a rainbow um, and so on. But as it in inverted color, it looks a little bit strange. And now if you get used to the black point, uh, what I will do, I will continue, and as soon as you do, you can see a perfect black and white image, right? No, I think at the very beginning, it was a colorful image. And this is something, a process, that happen in your eyes, as chemical process in your eyes and your brain will take some time. So that's how easy it is to play tricks on your eyes. And so that's the reason why we do these recommendations, because we want to make sure that you work in an environment where you will be able to judge the colors on your screen and to be able to correct the colors and to be able to do color management all through the entire workflow. Okay, 
So that's what we want to do. So let's start with the second part that is, you see, we have done now the calibration for the monitor, for the computer monitor, and even if you work, if you do film uh, work, um, yeah, so if you, if you work from the computer, so image editing, film editing, we know about now from the computer. But at the end, we want to see the films, the videos, we want to see them on, let's say, a TV, on a front projector, and so on. Therefore, I have, before we start this part, I have one more question. Um, do you calibrate your video or your video reference TV set or your video reference monitor? Do you already do this? Please give me a feedback here. And I'm very astonished, to, I'm very, yeah, expecting for these results because um, I know we have not uh, done this webinar so often, so uh, it's always interesting to see the feedback. So thank you for watching and uh, what I will do, I will share the results with you and what you can see it's only 13% of you doing the calibration of the TV or the video reference monitor. So you see on um, uh, image editing, a lot of people do. As we have seen, it was only 13% who did not do a calibration of the computer monitor. Here it's the other way around. So, um, to my colleagues, there is um, a white market to go for. Now, it's important that you know about and you have been aware of the issues and therefore uh, it is good to uh, be aware and to see the possibilities. So, now we come to those situations where the computer is not attached, is not the source for the monitor, you see. differences to the computer monitor calibration. On a computer monitor calibration, we have the ICC profile, we have these correction curve loaded up in the graphics cards, you remember the lookup table. If you have a TV uh, set, this TV set does not have a connection to the computer. If you run a TV as a computer monitor, you just do a computer monitor calibration. But if you run a TV as a TV or with a Blu-ray player or DVD player or receiver, you have no graphic card where you can have the correction curve loaded in a lookup table. On a video reference display that is attached via an extra box to a computer, this box prevents uh, to have an ICC profile to be go in there. So that means you will have no possibility at the moment to have the ICC profile in there. So what do you have to do? You have to do the calibration in a different way and that's what we have a look in now. In the end, it's quite easy to do. So we will start now for the Spider 4 Elite HD TV calibration. Again, it starts with an assistant uh, similar. You can see that's now uh, from this football. Uh, it's now a TV. Okay, so it helps you to assist color temperature, presets, brightness, contrast, color, and tint. This will be optimized by the uh, by the calibration. Again, you will have. It's a checklist here because it will take in total, you see, a, a monitor calibration, let's say take three to, say, five, seven minutes. Um, a TV monitor calibration, a video reference monitor calibration um, uh, will take something about 15, 20, 25 minutes, something about that. In the beginning, a few minutes more, at the end, a little bit faster. Okay, so that means Make sure you have your DVD player. Make sure you have the remote control for the DVD player and the TV. Make sure you have your laptop or computer in reach and the Spider 4 Elite HD sensor attached. Okay, good. So 
again, warm up and so on. But I will show you the setup. It's in the end very easy. You will attach the Spider 4 Elite um, HD using the spider web, or if it's not such a big one, just attach in the normal way as you attach to a computer screen. Um, or here you can see how the spider web is used. Uh, the rubber bands uh, help you to attach the sensor with the cradle uh, on the display surface. Okay, great. Connect the Spider 4 Elite HD sensor with the computer because the computer runs the software. And use the Blu-ray uh, Blu or DVD player. There are C uh, DVDs or C uh, Blu-rays. They have this, uh, these test patterns and uh, you will have to run them from uh, your Blu-ray DVD player. If you don't have a Blu-ray or DVD player, these test patterns are also available in an electronic form. Just contact our technical support and that's it. Okay. And then you use your remote control uh, to enter the given values to your TV. That's the way it works and that's uh, the reason Again, you will select what type of uh, um, TV you have. Um, then it comes to brightness and due to the reason we have no standard here, every manufacturer does it, goes its own way. So it may be that brightness uh, has uh, something, the current value is zero and it goes from minus 50 to plus 50. We have seen a, a lot of difference or it goes from, from zero to 200 or whatever. Please adjust here. That's, uh, you will have individual lookup. And if a function is not identical at the TV, you can uncheck this like I have done with the color temperature presets here. Okay, good. Then you will be asked, uh, and therefore it will be really fast now, uh, you will be asked to play um, one of the test patterns. This is test pattern number one um, uh, on the Blu-ray player and uh, it will go for uh, a measurement and we will be asked to uh, again to do uh, let's say white pattern number two and uh, again it will be taking time for reading after this two you will be asked okay take your remote control change the contrast to whatever value change the brightness to whatever value make sure the menu which is maybe displayed on screen um, is turned off so you have the entire screen uh, with the test pattern again and you click on next and the sensor will read it again and this is the way you go next time to zero then it may be 50 it may be next time 25 and something and in the end here I've got the value which was 10 here you see so you do it in an approach uh, step by step because there's a direct con a connection to the TV. That's the reason why. But in the end, it's quite easy to do. And so you have, at the end, you have a curve. And uh, at the end of the calibration, you will have uh, the green uh, arrows indicating the, uh, indicating the values. And of course, you can print a report. So that's very, very easy. The gray arrows uh, showing the values before the calibration and that means at the end you can have the possibility to see before and after and so on and that's the way how to calibrate uh, the TV set or the video reference display monitor and uh, so that's uh, in the end a very very easy way to do you see but you have to do because as we have seen from the computer monitors, we have a different variety and that's the same situation with the TV and also with the reference monitor for video editing. Okay, so that's good to know. So we have everything in the box to do the stills, to do the videos, so that means even if you're on TV, if you're using your camera, you have the possibility to do all the calibration here. And uh, that will guide me uh, more or less to the end now. For those I have mentioned uh, the Spider ebook before, for those who want to get some additional information here, we have the Spider ebook at our website. You can download for free, um, free of charge, uh, as you can see. Um, 
It shows you all about color management in six chapters. And it's not like a book for reading. It's more uh, like a book to have a reference here and to see how to do the work. And you will also see how to work with our software. Okay. Additional information can be found also on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, YouTube. And for all those uh, who need additional information, you say um, the recommendation is uh, use our online ticket system, please. Uh, the feedback is quite fast. You just go on our website, contact customer support, and you will find a support form. Please submit. And uh, I would say I can promise you will have a feedback within one day at least. Very often earlier, we have uh, offices located uh, in Europe as well as in America. So we have quite a large time frame where we will be able to reply. Okay, so, and everybody else, uh, we have more webinars to come. Uh, webinars uh, from our Asian colleagues, please uh, um, have a look at the link, uh, which you will see in the follow-up email. So therefore, I would like to say thank you now, and please,